As we look at section 10.4 part 2, we have a little bit more of a dance problem, but still we just have an x squared as our goal and trying to get it all by itself. So we're going to add 27 to both sides because that's the first step in trying to isolate that 3x squared. Now that 3x squared is by itself, we have 3x squared equals 27. We now want to get the x squared by itself. What are you going to do? I hope you thought divide by side, both sides by 3. So now x squared equals 9. Now we're back to the exact point where we're on the previous page. We take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus 3. In set notation, that's negative 3 and positive 3, remembering to put the smaller one first. Let's look at our last one here. We add 40 to both sides, and we get 4a squared equals 49. We divide both sides by 4 to get the a squared by itself, and now we have 49 over 4. I hope you remember that you can take the square root of a fraction by taking the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. Don't forget while you're doing all this though about that plus or minus. The square root of 49 is 7 and the square root of 4 is 2. So our answer is plus or minus 7. Now realize the book might write this as a decimal, possibly as 3.5. So don't be thrown either by writing an answer as negative 7 halves and positive 7 halves or negative 3.5 and positive 3.5. As we look at the next problem, I want to start first by doing a little bit of a review over area. I've diagrammed out here three different figures, a square, rectangle, and a circle. Let's look at first the area of a square. The formula for the area of a square is side times side, or in this case, area of a square equals x squared. Do you remember the area of a rectangle? Well, the area of a rectangle is base times height. Our third formula for today is the area of a circle. This little diagonal dotted line here is the radius, and so the area of a circle is pi r squared. You may have thought it was pi times d, or 2 pi r. That's the formula for the circumference of a circle, not the area. So let's use these formulas as we look at the next problem. We're supposed to find the radius of a circle with an area of 154 inches. Well, let's use the area formula for a circle. The area formula for a circle, remember, is pi r squared. So we replace the area with 154, and we use pi r squared. Well, now I'm going to use an approximation for pi of 3.14. I've got to get rid of that to isolate the r squared, and so I'm going to take 154, and I'm going to divide it by 3.14. And my answer is 49.044. I'm going to leave that on my calculator, because that way I can be more accurate as I continue the problem. Now I want to take the square root of both sides to try to get my actual answer. Remember, you have a plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to raise this to the power of 1 half. So I have plus or minus 7.003 equals r. Whenever we have a story problem, we have to make sure we answer the question. It says find the radius of the circle. Well, radius can only be positive. So we're going to throw out our negative answer. Second, it says round to the nearest inch. And so we're going to have to say the radius is seven inches. Or you could write it with a symbol seven inches in that capacity. Here's the rest of the problem as I can show you and move it back up for you. So we took the square root of both sides and got seven inches written in one of two ways. I hope this has been helpful in estimating square roots.